Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, finally to Super Mario Bros. 2. It's been quite a bit, seeing as how I lost the save data of the last couple of parts, but it's okay. Uh, the extra lives are inconsistent, but I went back and I replayed every level using the same characters. Which is important, because towards the end of this game, they show you how many levels each character beat. So it is still the same as it was in those parts. The only thing that's changed is my lives. But I'm here in World 5, and this is where the difficulty of this game really starts to ramp up. I would say this is probably either the hardest or the second hardest world of the game, and it's World 5. Part of the reason I'm picking Toadstool for this level is this level is all about jumping over these bottomless pits. And in some cases they want you to jump on these fish's heads, which is really difficult, or at least it's not exactly something I'd like to do, which I can just avoid if I fly. Uh, but also, this entire level takes place, except for that first room with that one enemy, and except for the boss room, entirely in this one section. So if we die, which is very easy considering there's a bottomless pit, we then have to redo a lot. Also, in here we have a mushroom, which is very nice. Whew, okay. Normally, I like to super jump and get past them without having to worry about anything, but if I have to jump on them, so be it. I have no clue how to get that mushroom up there. Normally, I just go in here for the coins, which we do get a lot of coins this level, so that's nice. But anyway, there we have a new type of birdo. At least I'm pretty sure it's a new type of birdo, the silver birdo. We might have encountered them recently, I just can't remember right now. It's been a little while since my last few parts were recorded. Uh, but this, this birdo, the one different thing about them is that they only shoot fireballs, making the mushroom platform absolutely necessary. Here we are. That's the end of level one of World 5. Oh. Eight coins. This isn't actually as many if we would have died and we were to restart the level and use the potion at the beginning of the level over again, we would instead get nine coins total. At least I'm pretty sure. Well, no, because sometimes we can miss them if we're toadstool since we don't grab as many. I don't know, the amount you get here, it it's, it's changes from time to time. But we've gotten a lot more lives in this playthrough than we did the original one. And we're getting a lot more lives here. So that's nice. Uh, on to level 2 now, we're gonna pick Peach again. 20 extra lives, I don't think I've ever had that many in the, this game. This level's all about these ladybug enemies who we just want to go under or go on top of. Or we can kill them. Anyway, it works. Also, down here in this pipe, this might seem like another, you know, you gotta... You gotta just kill the enemy and get somewhat closer to getting a heart, but that's not exactly the point of this area. The point of this area is to bomb that and go down here, where there's a second area in which we can uh, grab these items here. There's a, that there, which can give us another kill, as well as a potion, which we might as well take out of here. Uh, and using it in here does nothing. It's a waste. But since there's stuff out here, we might as well use it here. Ooh, and a mushroom. We want that. Very nice. I would one day like to play Doki Doki Panic, just to find all the changes made in between this and that game, to see what enemies were different, what musical tracks were different, like when you go in that subspace area, what is the music track? Because it certainly wouldn't be the same as in here, because here it's the original, I just died, here it's the original Super Mario Bros. theme. We might as well go in and grab it again, oh, and we got to kill the shy guy along the way. You know, I kind of feel bad for killing Shy Guys. I actually like Shy Guys quite a bit. In fact, actually, <laughs> when I was very young, I don't remember when this was, but it was at some point in elementary school, one Halloween I decided to dress up as a, a Shy Guy for Halloween. And how I did that was I wore a red jacket, a red hoodie, uh, regular pants, and I... <laughs> with my hood up, I put a paper plate on my face and cut some holes into it. And so it was just this dude in a hoodie with a paper plate on his face. And that was my Halloween costume, I didn't buy anything. Well, granted, I wouldn't have bought anything at the time because I was in elementary school. Up this vine we go. And this is another level where we have this long section before we actually get to any checkpoints. Like, you saw I made it pretty far and then had to go all the way back to the ladder at the beginning of the level. We're gonna sniff it, no problem. Oh, and here we gotta climb these vines while the ladybugs are coming after us, which I majorly failed to do. I was thinking I could just take the hit and keep going up, for, but for some reason Peach wouldn't grab the vine. Speaking of vine, you guys have been playing Piranha Plant Smash? Because he's kind of weird. But he does fly a little bit. Piranha, wait! Yeah, okay, I'll 
In this section, we grab a pal which immediately throws us down and we need to avoid the spikes along our fall. Oof. Careful now. And as we go, we need to be careful on the landing here because there are some bottomless pits we can definitely fall into. Anyway, here we have another red birdo. There is a fish flying along here. Oh, I died. But there is a fish flying along here who we can also use to attack the Birdo, assuming we jump on top of its head and grab it. But it's kind of close to Birdo at most times. I mean, granted, Birdo does shift along. But a lot of the times it's just right next to Birdo, and at that point you might as well just wait to grab an egg. I mean, I suppose it's if you, in case you have really, really bad luck with getting eggs, like Birdo's only shooting fire or something. You know, at the end of the game they show us how many... Uh, how many levels each character beaten? I'd like to know how many levels each Birdo was in. Like, what color Birdo was the most common and what was the least common. I know there's still one more type of Birdo we haven't encountered yet. Oh, we're not getting as good luck with this, uh, with this bonus chance as we did last level, are we? Oh man, not one yet. There we go, we got one. Alright, last level of World 5, and I'm actually going to be picking Luigi for this one. Toadstool... Well, useful. Not exactly the best in terms of reaching the first section over here in which we can reach with Luigi no problem. It's that area up there. We just need to super jump with Luigi and we make it no problem. And here we can grab some, uh, we can grab some coins using this. Oh, there's no mushroom here, unfortunately. But we can also go down... Well, okay, no one-ups, but we can go down this pipe here. See if there's anything... Oh, no, we can't. Maybe that is a world port. I guess I should explain at this point, even though, here, since it's so unlikely I'm going to get three game overs because I still have both continues, uh, I might as well explain. In this game, oh, I died. In this game, the there are warp zones similar to the first Super Mario Bros, but they work a little bit differently, you see. In this game, uh, once you get a door in the subspace, sometimes in those jars you actually want to go down them and then you'll be transported to another world. And actually in 1-3 there's a perfect example of that where uh, instead of going through the door you keep going onward with the subspace jar in hand and then you just bring it to the uh, to the jar and then you drop it there and go inside the the jar inside subspace and you'll be brought to world 4 I believe. And then there's another one in World 4, so that's kind of the shortcut, is in 1-3, then in 4-2, and then all of a sudden you're in World 6. Oh, I was hoping to bring him over there. Oh! I threw the bob successfully, like no problem, and then I jumped into him. Wow. Luigi's actually not bad to play as in this game, given how high he jumps, you can kind of ignore a lot of the platforming. And you know, his speed on the ground and in terms of digging items up, it isn't too bad either. It's, I think it's about the same as Mario's. Oh, and here's a section where inside there are some bob and there's also bob over here. And basically, if you blow up the stuff down there, you can get, you get, get some rewards. There might be like a 1-up or something over there, but I'm just gonna ignore it. We have 18 lives, so we're doing just fine. And apparently these sparky guys cannot go through the shadow on the door, or the light coming out of the door. Oh my gosh, be, uh, apparently hitting me was enough to send Luigi flying. Apparently his jump height also translates into his knockback. You know, this section very much reminds me of the, the woodwork section of Super Paper Mario for the Wii, where you're traveling through a tree. It's the one where Bowser's first playable, I believe. Oh boy, and we gotta make it through here, don't we? Jump, jump, okay, we're good. Oh man, not even Luigi's jump can make it up there. Okay, so super jump is necessary there. I suppose some people may have had a, may have had a manual when they played this game, and that's how they would have discovered the super jump in the first place. But I didn't discover the manual, or I didn't have a manual when I bought this game, uh, so I didn't know what the super jump, like how to activate it or anything. This section we just need to avoid these walking plants that shoot flames. Excuse me, what? I was like rolling with that. I was like, oh, there's a magic dude. I'll jump on top of him, grab his carpet, and get along. But I just jumped on him and he killed me. He's He, he knows. He knows how to beat the Mario Bros. You just gotta have a spiky head. 
Oh, no wonder Sonic is Mario's rival. Anyway, grabbing the carpet and heading out of here, we just need to be as quick as we can, and Luigi's jump should get us the rest of the way, no problem. Ooh, there we go. Okay, this section has a lot of the pink shy guys, so they don't walk straight off the edges. It'd be kind of terrifying if it was just a bunch of red ones committing suicide in the clouds. Oh hey, and it's Birdo. There we go, okay, we got the red Birdo out of here. And we can move on to the real boss of the world. Which is Claw Grip, or Claw Glip. Anyway, he throws rocks at us, and we gotta throw the rocks back at him. It's pretty simple. Uh, but this guy's actually one of the more annoying bosses. And I can't remember if it was this guy, or if it was, uh... Or if it was... Uh, Fry Guy, who was added to the game for the North American Mario 2. Because I know that there was an extra fight with Mauser in the Japanese version, in Doki Doki Panic. Oh man, he beat us again. I wonder how many hits he takes. We hit him twice that time. It'd be nice if he didn't take too many hits. Come on, Claw Grip. Claw Grip makes sense, right? Because he's gripping the rocks and throwing them at us. Claw Glip doesn't make any sense to me. I think that's a mistranslation, just like calling Birdo Ostro. There we go. Five hits. He's out of here. And that is the end of World 5. Let's see how we do in this bonus game real quick. Eh, okay. Okay, there we go. We need to make up for some of the lives. We entered that world with, like, 16 or 20 or so, and we, ended, and we exited with 14.